ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, order organics of all ages. I'm Double R, and in this video, we are going to cover the tiers of uh, responsibility and how people suddenly, for some strange magical reason, have fallen into the trap of RPC-10. They forget RPC-10. Now, for those of you who notice, I put the picture up here about RPC-10 on a video that isn't exactly, isn't exactly about roleplay, but we are going to go over this in a very specific way. Now, let's get started. The four tiers of responsibility, at least in movies, is the company, the director, writer, actor slash actress. Four tiers. Company, that tier, they're the ones that usually give the funding, they're the ones that they want to push an agenda, they put, pass it down. That's the big one. They're the ones that distribute everything. It is their job to do marketing. It is their job to do this, that, the other thing. They're the big, they're the big dogs. They're the ones that take care of all that big stuff. So if you want a marketing spree, they're the ones that would do it. If you want a good funding project, they're the ones that do it. You get the idea. It's their brand. Then we go down to the director. If the director has an agenda, they will push it to the writer and say, make sure you work it in. The director is also the final say in most of the video, most of the movie, most of the shots. They're the ones that go, yes, this looks good, or no, it doesn't. We need to redo it. They're the ones that don't worry about the one and done, bing, bang, boom situation. They worry about getting it to look right. They want the scene to go correctly. If the actor fails the role, then they have to talk to the actor. That is their job as the director. That is their job. They are these oversee the whole thing. Now, of course, you got photog uh, director of photography, sound director, yada, yada, blah, blah, blah. They all report back to the main director to make sure everything works smoothly. That's their job. Now, we go to the writer. The writer, if they wish to add their own politics into it, they'll sneak it into the story. If they do it smartly, they'll sneak it in. Otherwise, they just kind of hit you over the head like... Yeah, flying boats. That's all people want to see. But the writer is one mainly for how, the, how people are supposed to move to certain areas, what is supposed to be said, how the story is paced, yada yada, blah blah blah, you get the idea. Now we go down to the writer, and here's where people have the problem. For some reason, I had to redo this whole video because of another factor that came up. There was a clip that went out right before the Rise of Skywalker with a comedian and Daisy Ridley. And a lot of people said, oh no, it's Ray. This is going to be a cringe fest. Okay, I'm going to stop you right there. Welcome to RBC 10. RBC 10 is pretty much an actor is not their character. Samuel L. Jackson is not walking around using a force to throw people. You get what I'm saying? The character was Mace Windu. Daisy Ridley is not sitting there doing force chokes and force cartwheels and pulling stuff off of shelves of telekinesis. No. She's Daisy Ridley. In fact, this, in fact, the season... Ah. In fact, The Simpsons made a very good joke of this with Lucy Lawless. Wow. Thanks for saving us. No problem. Now let's get you kids home. Wait a minute. Xena can't fly. I told you, I'm not Xena. I'm Lucy Lawless. Oh. See how that works? Xena does not fly, but Lucy Lawless did in that universe. There's that difference. There's a role, and then there's the actor. That said, we move forward. Brie Larson was the actress who portrayed Captain Marvel. Captain Marvel got hit pretty hard by fans because of the fact that Brie Larson was spitting and spewing the identity politics in every interview. She wasn't exactly promoting the movie, she was promoting the ideology. Uh, the ideology. So of course, people were kind of against the movie. But it made so much money, yeah, 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 yeah. It's not like Disney couldn't do anything to offset those numbers at all. Nothing at all, 100%, nothing at all, got it. Now, I am putting this out because, again, ide ideology, she was pushing hers. So, let's talk about the movie that was made, Captain Marvel. Now, when you look at Captain Marvel, what was the number one complaint? People said Brie Larson was carried. 
Brie Larson is an award-winning actress, so why was her acting so lackluster in Captain Marvel? Maybe it's something she did not like. Maybe it's because the director didn't do his fucking job. Because you see, in the movie that she got the award for, the director was on point. The director was paying attention. No, I don't want you to do that. I want you to do this if you can. I want you to practice, come back, we'll try to take the shot again. They made sure the character was portrayed properly. They made sure Brie Larson was invested in the situation enough to where she would act appropriately, and that is what got her the award. But in Captain Marvel, the director just said, fuck it, let's go, and well, Brie Larson phoned it in as to be expected. Now there was a couple parts where it was, quote, slightly funny, where she yelled at the scroll, for example, because the scroll yelled at her. Yeah, possible reaction that would be very logical. Having a bad day, this dude's yelling at you, you yell back. Okay, fair enough. The point being, that that was a time where she was given more liberty to just do whatever. The director did not give a shit. The director is at fault. The director failed Brie Larson, in turn, having Brie Larson fail the movie of Captain Marvel because it looked like she had no expression. You see how that works? It is the director's job to make sure the actor or actress is invested enough in the scene to at least give a shit. Now we go back to Daisy Ridley. Daisy Ridley tried to keep out of things as much as possible, but she wanted to promote the movie. She was promoting the movie, not the ideology. She was promoting the movie, not the ideology. I repeat this one more time, she was promoting the movie, not the ideology. But because people saw Kathleen Kennedy as the puppet master and was using Ray as the figurehead, they assumed she was solely pushing the ideology. No, she was trying to push movies. Because again, she wants to have a job. Surprise, surprise. Where Brie Larson has an award and she can be like, I don't need this fucking job. There's a difference between her and Daisy Ridley, who doesn't have the award, going, I would like a job, and I have a job in a known franchise. Lucky me, I should try to probably promote that, so hopefully I get more work down the line. Ta-da, logic. But the point is, I'm not sitting here trying to defend Daisy Ridley, I'm trying to make a point. This is why a lot of people had no issue with John Boyega. And this is the crux of my argument. You see, no one really had a problem with Finn. You follow what I'm saying? No one had a problem with Finn. John Boyega was doing the best he could. He was going through the interviews. He was trying to bob and weave through the stupid shit. I'll give him credit there. He was bobbing and weaving pretty, pretty damn good. Haven't seen that kind of bobbing and weaving since Muhammad Ali. Now I say this because Brie Larson and Daisy Ridley are the two opposites of the spectrum. Daisy Ridley was trying to keep out of things as much as possible, but her character was highly hated. On the flip side, Captain Marvel, a lot of people liked the idea of Captain Marvel in general, but Brie Larson went out there and became an intolerable, suffer uh, uh, intolerable insufferable pain in the ass. So that dragged down the rating for Captain Marvel in general in fans' eyes. Or boost, boosted it up depending on how far left you are. So with that being said, this one little part came up where she was pretty much trying to defend the secrets of Star Wars. Not like it really matters because the leaks are out for four to six months. But the point being, it was supposed to be a comedy skit where people came up to try to convince her otherwise. There, were one, there was one really amusing spot for me, and then there was a couple cameos that made me go, okay, fair enough. There's Tom Holland who pops up, which kind of surprises her apparently. There was John Boyega himself, who comes in at the end. And, of course, there was J.J. Abrams, who told her to stay strong, because he's the director. It's one of those things of, don't give away any of the secrets to my movie. Stay strong. It's a little subtle shot. It's a little playful shot. It's adding to the skit of, hey, don't give up. We're, I'm with you. Just don't ruin my movie for me, please. Just don't, don't expose anything. That was kind of like the skit going through it. Now, there's a lot of parts of that skit that was cringe. Bar none. Hands down. <laughs> but there were, like I said, little spots that were okay. And there was one spot that made me laugh. The one spot that actually made me go, okay, what, was this one. And like, what happens to the resistance? Yeah, because they weren't doing so hot. They resist. Shame. 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 What? She gave a legit answer. 
They asked what about the resistance, and she said they resist. Done. Game over. I can't argue that. But the point stands. No one immediately watched the video. Let me rephrase that. A lot of people who were mad at Star Wars did not watch the video because they saw Rey on screen. This is the person that plays Rey. So immediately seeing the person that plays Rey, don't care. No, seriously, that's what it came out down to. Don't care. Nope. But she's not dressed up like Rey. Don't care. Is the actress that played Rey? Don't care. Did you watch the clip? I don't have to. It's the actress that played Rey. Fuck it. I know it's going to be cringe. Hey Daisy, uh, does Rey go to the dark side? Tom, come on! You notice that the RPC-10 card is still there. You notice it, how it popped right back up when I started saying that, right? In many cases, people didn't like Brie Larson. So it translated to not liking Captain Marvel because the actress behind it, meh. Daisy Ridley is pretty much being shot, per se, for role-playing a Mary Sue. The girl wanted a job in a popular franchise and she's being shot down by everybody under the sun because she took a job in a popular franchise. Did they blame the right whore? No. Did they blame the director? Not exactly. He's getting glancing shots. Stay strong, Daisy. Well, J.J. Abrams is doing the best he can. Daisy really was literally doing the best she could with what was written out for her. What kind of acting did you expect her to pull off with the shit that was written? Seriously, what type of shit, what type of acting did you expect her to pull off with the type of shit she was literally handed? So yes, the main priority person to blame should be J.J. Abrams. And the overall, the overarching problem is with Kathleen Kennedy because she's the one that hired Ryan Johnson, which kind of screwed everything up. Which is director, uh, per, director agenda. Ryan Johnson doesn't like white guys. Bar none, hands down. Luke, character assassination. Ryan Johnson was like, hey, this is what JJ gave me to work with. He was the first one on the block. I wasn't the first one. Fuck his work. This is my work. Boom. Everything he's set up, fuck it. I'm shooting it down. So the next director, fuck him. Ha <laughs> ha! In fact, even Kevin Smith, when he was reviewing The Last Jedi, said, this is a fuck JJ moment, but I'm going to change how it's worded. In this movie, there are a series. I, I, I think Ryan Johnson is a really nice guy, and, and uh, I know he is. I sat here and talked to him and shit. Um, but, and I don't think he was in any way, I don't want anyone to misconstrue this. I don't think he was attacking JJ or Force Awakens, but there are plenty of what I like to call fuck you JJ moments in this movie where it seems like the, you know, the work that was done in Force Awakens just got fucking undone in one very quick swoop by Ryan. So again, I'm not saying Ryan says fuck you to JJ for real, it's a joke. But there are fuck you JJ moments in this movie. And every time I say this, it's actually referring back to fuck JJ. Which is pretty much what it was. J.J. Abrams gave a script, and apparently Ryan Johnson made his script, gave it to J.J., and they both read it. They're like, oh, oh. But J.J. went first. J.J.'s movie went first. That being said, if Ryan Johnson was permitted to take the first step instead of J.J. Abrams, and he made his version of Star Wars first, Maybe it would have gone better. And a lot of people were like, no, it wouldn't have. Oh my God, no. Follow with me here. Follow along. We have to compare Ryan Johnson's style and everything to the situation at hand after The Force Awakens. If Ryan Johnson was the one that made Force Awakens in his style, and not in JJ's style, but in his own style, where he wants to subvert, what would he subvert? What the fuck could Ryan Johnson have subverted if he was the one that directed Force Awakens. What could he have subverted? Oh, Luke didn't kill Palpatine. No, J.J. Abrams subverted that with the, last, uh, with the Rise of Skywalker. <laughs> Whoops. You see the point. Ryan Johnson would have had a clear shot. He could have done whatever the fuck he wanted. He could have had a heyday if he wrote Episode 7. And that probably would have stuck a lot better. Just putting it out there. Again, not defending Ryan Johnson. I'm just saying... His type of story probably would have worked better if it was number seven instead of number eight. But because JJ went first, 
His number seven was the established line. Everything that was open for plot uh, for plot continuations was opened by J.J. Abrams. Ryan Johnson came in and said, fuck J.J., fuck the next director, fuck this franchise. Boop, done. Like a petty child, he went through it with his anyway with no adjustments and just said, fuck it, I'm fucking the whole thing up. And guess what? It fucked the whole thing up. Director agenda, writer agenda. Again, what was the what were the actors supposed to do? What was Kelly Marie Tran supposed to really do when they told her, get in this brown potato sack and look frumpy, uh, look frumpy? Okay, this is my job. I'm supposed to get in this potato sack and look frumpy. Mm. Was she happy with that? Probably not. You see the point. A lot of the actors were in a situation where it's like, this is my job. This is what I gotta do. So they're gonna do the best they can. Oh, well, there's Holdo and yeah, 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 yeah. I get it. I get it. You don't like Holdo. I get it. Again, actress taking a role. Blame the writer, blame the director. Now, when it came to The Last Jedi, since Ryan Johnson was the one that had to do it directly, since he was the uh, director and the writer of that movie, a lot of people were wise to target him because that was where the level of responsibility was. The acting, somewhat bad. Ryan Johnson's fault. He's director. The writing of the story was kind of bad. Ryan Johnson was the writer. His fault. One of these lines were rubbish. Ryan Johnson's the writer. His fault. Kelly Marie Tran is in a potato sack and looks frumpy. Director's choice. Ryan Johnson's fault. Now, of course, people are like, I don't like the character of Kelly Marie Tran. Oh, sorry. Sorry. I don't like the character that Kelly Marie Tran portrayed on screen. I don't like Rose Tico. That's not Kelly's fault. She did what she had to do. She did the best she could with the lines given, with the direction given. Again, learn when to blame the actor slash actress. I had this issue with the whole Jar Jar Binks thing too. Because people are going, oh my God, Jar Jar is such an annoying character. And I'm like, guess what? Writer wrote it that way. Blame the writer. Don't blame the actor. The actor is literally doing as he is instructed. That's his job. I'm going to blame a private for what the general says. You, no, you blame the general. But that is my point. People go, I don't like this character, so I immediately hate the actress. Or the actor. Sorry. Depending on the situation. If the actor doesn't have enough good will work behind them, then they get slapped down hard. Daisy, who are Ray's parents? John, you know the answer. I do. Okay. And the reason why I bring that up is because that's something that they say about Adam Sandler. He was a comedian. He is mostly known for funny and doing the nerdy doody do and having those kind of voices. When he went serious, he went hard. He just, when he did serious, he went full serious. That was it. I think there's a couple movies with Drew Barrymore where he tried to go, what was it? I believe he went full on serious for one with Drew Barrymore. He went full serious. And I think the second one, there's a little bit of slapstick in there, but you get the idea. There's a little bit of a boom. We have a serious, act, uh, a serious actress with a comedian, but they're trying to push this off as a more serious story. So it's a comedian that you have to expect will be toned down. Boom. Pretty straightforward. It was understandable. People understood that. They got it. So Adam Sandler was given a little bit more leeway. Jim Carrey was pretty much solo star in movies that were serious, which caused a problem. When they came back around for Cable Guy, it was supposed to be another serious actor. And it's supposed to be a story about stalking. And it didn't quite go so well because of how Jim Carrey was directed to do it. All that said, these are two actors that built up some goodwill with the fan base. They have fans. There was goodwill built up. So when something slowed down their career, it only slowed it down. Daisy Ridley's case, she doesn't have that goodwill built up. She doesn't have enough of it built up. So she takes a role like Ray. People go, I hate Ray. Well, something that would slow down her career, 
Like if she had the same type of career like Jim Carrey where she has a whole lot of roles and everyone loved all those roles and then she hit a role that people don't like, her career would have just slowed down as well. It just would have and then she would have pried through it. But in this case, this is going to be a big role that she is known for. And people hate it because it's a Mary Sue. Again, not her fault. She didn't write the role. Blame the writer. And I'm only pointing this out because, again, the whole little advertisement, there was no problem with John Boyega. There was no problem with him being in it. Nope. No problem with Tom Holland being in it. Nope. No problem with J.J. Abrams popping up. Nope. Tina Fey, uh, Tina Fey popping up. Maybe cringe, but no real problem with her being there. Nope. No problem with Salma Hayek, Hayek being in there. Nope. But Daisy Ridley. Oh, my God. It's Ray. We're done. It's, nope. Raising it. We're done. Raising it. Don't care. Raising it. They hate the character so much that the actress is getting penalized. Again, she's not the one that wrote the character. She's not the one that was doing the directing. It is the director's fault for not having her act appropriately if they felt it wasn't acted appropriately. And it is the writer's fault for giving her those lines. People, when you are mad at an actor or actress, ensure that you are mad at them for the right reason. If it is out of their control, it is out of their control. Are we getting it? This is kind of why I can't get mad at Christian Stewart because, again, it is the director who saw her acting and went, yes, that works for the scene. Let's move on. Really? That works for the... That... Okay. And that's my point. When you want to blame somebody, make sure you blame the proper person. Again, the director is the overarching person. If the acting felt bad to you, the director told them that was fine. The director is at fault. The fuckers should do their job. If the rhymes were so cringe, the lines are so cringe, well, did they state that it was an ad lib line? Well, no. Then it's probably the writer's fault. Blame the writer. Because there's only so many ways you can say, you fucked it up. I'm double R. I'm out. Why is this even a thing? Why did I have to explain this? I thought this was logical, but <laughs> not from what I saw.